Hey everybody, welcome to my little tutorial on how I like to make drum charts for myself. This is on, I guess, what you would call a Nashville standard. And we're going to start off, actually, with a uh, blank piece of computer paper. I like it uh, blank, I don't like grid paper, whatever, it just it's easier to make however I want and the lines don't get confusing. So we're going to be doing uh, She's Country by Jason Aldean, title at the top, artist at the top right. Notice I'm using pencil because I do make a lot of mistakes and erase a bunch. Tempo goes in the top left and I'll show you how I got that in a second. So right now I'm playing the song and what I'm going to do is what I like to call the road map and I'm just putting out the sections as they go by. So I'm going to go ahead and count with the song as it goes and then I'm actually going to be making measures while I'm listening to the song. And as I'm going you can see I'm kind of making a, a couple little notes and then whenever I hear a different section come in, I go ahead and use the next line. And on the left hand column is, is the different section, so intro, then the next one is V1 for verse 1, and then CH for chorus, INT for interlude, which is just basically a, um, a musical part, no words, that happens after a lot of courses in, in pop and pop country. V2 is obviously the second verse. You also notice that I put a number four up. I don't like to have my head stuck in a chart, um, but if I need to be looking around or, or whatnot, I, I know I can come back and see, oh, this feels like the end of four, this feels like the end of eight, and I can see where that is. BDCH is what I like to call the breakdown chorus. A lot of pop country has where they'll do another chorus, but it'll be really soft and then it'll kick in after you know about halfway through or not. So now I've got the song pretty much charted as far as what it would be like without notation. And I would do something similar similar to this if I wasn't, you know, if I couldn't read notation or, or if I couldn't write it. Um, but since I can, I can get a little bit more detailed. And a lot of guys will make something pretty, you know, chicken scratch, scribble down, oh, eight bars, then this, whatever, and put notes next to it, which is fine. And it, and it works for a lot of guys. I like to have something that um, will not only let me practice uh, transcribing, but it will also get me a couple more listens to the song and that way uh, I'm, I'm much more familiar with the feel of it and little nuances. So now I'm going through and basically writing the groove uh, that I'm hearing. So I'm listening again to basically each section I go listen to it once, write down what I can figure out and then I go through the whole thing and kind of make sure that everything sounds and looks cohesive. You'll notice that I've got the two over the repeat sign. That's uh, I just repeat the two bar phrase before. I don't write in hi hats because they can really make uh, they can muddy up a chart. And I like to take a picture of this and make it a PDF on my iPad, which makes it smaller. So the less confusing I can make it, the better. So I just write plus hi hat in there. So now I'm listening to the first verse. I transcribe the groove. Notice again how I'm not using rests. Um, I'm, I'm making this really late at night, um, this, this chart, so I'm pretty tired. So there are some inconsistencies as far as um, where they, uh, when I actually put rests in. But that brings me to my next point, is that I'm making this chart for me. I'm not making it for someone else to look off of. You know, this isn't like a professional arrangement by any means. It's stuff that I know that I can look at and stuff that I know that I can see and uh, things that I know would, would trip me up. And uh, the more you chart and the more you play with charts that you've written, the more you kind of understand what you need and what you don't. Um, since this is going to be for a little bit higher... Um, profile gig I decided to go ahead and do one of these charts which is basically in between a chart and a transcription and I want to make sure that I've got the basic grooves down um, and then what I want to do is I'm, I go back and listen to anything that sounds interesting or cool or something that I think would really um, be essential for the song or for the drum part somebody looks back and you know you always love that feeling when you play with somebody you don't know and, and they call a tune and you hit something that that's just like the record um, and they look back and they you know give you that smile so that that's kind of something that I, I like to be able to pull out so now I'm, I'm going back again and, and listening making sure that I've got all the different sections and, and just 
something that I, I've, I've got all laid out for me. Um, if there's a fill, I don't uh, put the exact fill in, especially when you're playing late at night or you're playing to a nice crowd. The last thing you want to do is try to sit there and sight read a drum fill. So I like to just put fill there so I can have my freedom with it. Again, with the grooves, I'm not looking for the exact ghost notes. I'm not looking for the exact um, bass drum pattern all the time because not even Rich Redman plays this bass drum pattern verbatim when he plays it live, which is another good thing to look at when you're trying to figure out grooves and, and whatnot is to go ahead and actually look at live versions of the song so you can see how a drummer that is playing it live plays it. And you'll, I guarantee you, you'll see a little bit of difference from the record, at least in most cases. So now I'm going through, and again, I, I like to write the four and the eight just to remind myself where those ends are. And another thing is, is, is some country songs now are really big on making like seven and nine bar phrases, which is tough, so I wanna make sure that there's a difference for that. Well, I move the camera just to get a little bit closer. I'll tell you how I got the tempo. I use an app called Tempo by Frozen Ape, and it's got a tap tempo feature on there, and so I usually do that just to kind of get the relative. And for this one, uh, I actually went online, Googled the song and tempo and, and BPM, and I found this karaoke site that had... It said the this is at the exact same tempo as the record, 86.03. I plugged it into Logic, my recording software, along with the MP3 of the song, and they matched right up. So that's what I used. But I'm sure no one is going to be a big stickler about the .03. But now you can see how I'm a, I'm a little uh, a little tired here. You you can see some of them have rests in the bass drum parts, some don't. So it's it's kind of funny how that that happens right the bridge the interlude down and now I think I'm pretty much set and I go back through and I, and I don't like blank space again just another visual reminder so I'm writing repeat signs I'll also use hash marks if there's gonna be a fill or figures kinda like a big band chart just so I know where time is so there I'm making some hash marks and that pretty much does it for the chart so you can kinda see from top to bottom. It's not the cleanest chart, um, but it is pretty readable for me at least. And again, this is what I like, and you can have something different. So I went ahead and, and went to bed for a couple hours, woke up and got the chart, set everything up, got my GoPro running, pulled the chart over to the kit, and went ahead and played it after not playing it. So here it is, and you can take a listen to how it turned out.
All right, guys, there you have it. Although it's not my best playing by any means, I think it goes to show you that you could wake up, not even put shoes on apparently, and walk over to the drum set. And if you have a chart that you're comfortable enough with reading, you can go ahead and recreate the tune fairly accurately. The chart took about 10 to 15 minutes to write up, but since I'm writing more detailed in the chart, it makes me listen in a more detailed fashion, and therefore I start picking up nuances in the song that may not make it to the chart, but they actually come out in the playing because I'm used to hearing it. So I hope this helped you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what works for you if you guys have different ideas or want to streamline the process. And I'll talk to you later. Take it easy.